Our next speaker uh, is uh, from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, um, and she is going to talk about issues in organic certification. Madeline Watts, I'm sorry. Madeline Watts from KDA. So my program manager, Abigail George, was supposed to be here today, but she could not, so she sent me. So you guys are blessed with my presence today. Um, anyways, so let's see here. It says bias, but we're talking about organic certification basics today. No worries. All right, so like I said, um, Abigail George is our organic program manager for KDA, so she is the woman you want to go through if you have any questions, concerns, um, anything like that. Her contact information will be at the end of the presentation, and I also have my cards out at our table. All right, so first thing I have up here is why certify organic? So it's a big, big question here, but the main points that I'm going to talk about today is to be able to sell your products at a premium, depending on which market and scope you are. The scopes that we certify at KDA are crops, livestock, and processing and handling. And um, the organic food market is expected to reach $280 billion in 2024. So it is a rising business still. And the compound annual growth is at a rate of 11.7%. And that is expected to continue to rise. So it is a growing business. It can, should continue to do so. And it is also a federally regulated program. So it goes through the USDA. So the KDA is accredited through them. And unlike, this is a good thing, unlike people who get to promote their products as all natural, naturally grown, this is a regulated program, so you have the certification that can back up your hard work. All right, next we just have a little graphic here, just kind of showing that the growth is continual. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to update these since last year, but it is much higher this year than it was last year. I'll give you a second to look at that. I won't go through the specifics of the numbers, but. All right, and then who needs to be certified? So there are, I heard there was an exempt person in here. So if you make less than $5,000 a year, you can be um, qualified to be exempt. So that we do do that through KDA. So if you contact us, we can send you an exempt form and you would just send that back to us and we have you on our list of exempt handlers or um, producers. And the KDA currently certifies 150 farms throughout the state. We only certify in the state. Some of the other certifiers that Tony was talking about earlier, they do um, kind of nationwide or certain areas, but we only do it in Kentucky. So 70 of our people grow crops, 60 of our people grow um, crops and livestock because you can't have livestock without crops. And then 10 of those are processing and handling people. And we had 10 new applicants last year in 23. And as we have been going through the 24 ones this year, we have quite a few new applicants, which is very exciting. And then our minimum requirements for our crops is that the land has to be managed according to organic standards for at least three years. This is where we kind of get into that transition area. So to be able to begin transitioning, you have to not have used the big three, which are any fertilizer or composted plant and material that contains a synthetic substance. So there is a national list of um, prohibited substances on the regulations. And the other ones would be sewage sludge and burning as a means of disposal for crop residues produced on the operation. So any of those three items that have been done to your farm or operation, that means you cannot become certified. You have to wait that three years. And that's three years to harvest, not three years to start. So you can go ahead and plant before the three years, but harvest then. And then you have to use certified organic seeds unless, and we'll talk about that in the next slide, there is a couple of different reasons you can use non-organic seeds, but never any GMO or anything like that. And then the last thing is records, records, and records again. So you're going to have to write down basically everything that you do, and that is really just a safety precaution for you 
and for us, so you to have your back, us to have our back, because as inspectors, when we come in, we need to make sure that we can document and see the trail of everything that you've done. And that's really just to keep in compliance and make sure that you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. All right, and then like I said, this is kind of tiny, but I'm gonna give you the gist of everything because there's a lot of words on there. So basically what I was talking about with the seeds is if you aren't using a certified seed, then you may be using a um, non-GMO untreated seed. And you're only supposed to use these when the organic seed is commercially, commercially not available. So you searched for that seed and it wasn't available. So when that happens, you have to do a seed search. So you have to find three companies that have organic seed and prove that they did not have the seed that you were looking for. At that point, you're then allowed to use the non-GMO non untreated seed. And that's the gist of all these big words up here. All right, and then how to get certified is, if you are planning on transitioning, would be the best route would be to contact the Oak um, Association and set up a meeting to transition with them. And then you would choose your certifier. So there's a couple different ones. KDA is the only certifier within our state that only does our state. And then the private certifiers, examples were PCO, Oregon Tilth, et cetera. And then you would fill out your application in organic system plan. And if you have any questions about that or are confused about any parts, you can contact the certifier itself and ask the questions. And then it would go through a first review. Then someone else would come do your inspection. It would go through a final review. And at that point, you would have your certification decision. And then what can draw out the process is incomplete application materials. So if you were to send us something and you didn't fill it out all the way, we'd have to send um, an RFI back, which is a request for information. So that would elongate the pro process. And then um, if you submitted a late application, that would also subdue the process. But um, for the most part, those are the only reasons that should draw out the process. And then we have some resources up here. So we've got Oak on there, the organic regulations, which can be found online, um, our KDA organic marketing page, and then the NOP or National Organic Program page, which is a really good resource. And then here is our contact information. So like I said, we have oh, Abigail George, which is our organic program manager, and then my contact, I am I'm a reviewer and inspector at KDA, and I have my cards out at the table if anyone like, would like to grab one. Do you have any questions at the moment? Yes. So we at KDA do not actually certify honeybees for that reason. Um, we don't feel as a certifier we have the ability to be able to track the bees. So to our ability, technically, we don't think we can certify them. Because like you said, I mean, you know, bees go a range of a mile or more. How would you know which flower they landed on? You, it's almost impossible, really, to truly say that that would be organic. So at KDA, we don't, but other certifiers do. Madeline, that was some uh, good information about your pricing. Mm -hmm. Where can we find more information like that that shows the difference between conventional and organic? So. Honestly, there's just a lot online. It just depends on what you look up. So I think for that, we looked up like the organic market um, price of 2023 or 2024. Um, I meant to put in the new one for 24 because there was 23 information, more updated stuff, but um, I didn't get the chance to do that. But it's readily available. Um, organic Trade Association, OTA, has some of that information. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.